So good day, friends. This is Dr. Bob Hamilton, and you have tuned in today to the Hamilton Review, where kids and culture collide. Thank you, each of you, for making this show part of your day. It means so much to me. I know who you are, and I know what you do every day, and uh, the fact that you take even a moment to, to tune in really does mean a lot to me. So thank you for doing that. If you like what you hear, uh, we are building an audience, so pass this on to friends, family, other people that you know who might be interested in. And why do I ask that? Because, not because of me, but because the people I bring on the show on a weekly basis are really remarkable people. And today is certainly no exception. Uh, by the way, today is our Christmas show, Christmas 2023. Amazing is already here upon us, but uh, it's, it's really a, a joy to welcome uh, today to the podcast, uh, Laurel Gallucci. Laurel Gallucci is a remarkable woman. She's a mother. She's a wife. She's also the co-founder and CEO of a, of a company called Sweet Laurel, named, by the way, eponymously after her, because it turns out Laurel is a very sweet person. I had known her, I've known her for many, many years, and uh, you couldn't have chose a better name uh, for your company other than Sweet Laurel. So I just want to throw that out there. So Laurel Gallucci, thank you for coming today on the Hamilton Review. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Bob. It's an honor to be here. And uh, yeah, Sweet Laurel is named after me. And actually, at first, I did not want that to happen. <laughs> I, I kind of fought it. And uh, everyone else's votes won. Uh, but um, Sweet Laurel is founded after my own personal healing journey. So what we like is to remind people that, of that story and just share, you know, Sweet Laurel is this bakery. We're very health forward. We're very wellness forward, um, you know, because of that healing through food journey that I went upon. And so we basically have products and baked goods that are all grain free, uh, refined sugar free and dairy free. We ship them nationwide. We have a cake shop in Los Angeles that you can visit. And we also have products nationwide in grocery stores. So uh, you can get your hands on Sweet Laurel in many ways. So I'll, we'll share a little bit more about that later. Sure. But Yeah, I, I have to say, uh, Laurel, you, you're jumping ahead on, on a little bit on that because I was going to talk about that. But though, listen, uh, of all of the people that I've known and I've watched grow up, Sweet Laurel is a what I would call a breakout success. And it is a, a phenomenal story. And I'm so proud of you, Laurel, for what you have done and what you were here. You have taken your, your company's sweet Laurel. So before this is our Christmas show, and we're gonna we're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna talk. Uh I, I just I'm gonna turn the microphone over to you and just tell us a little bit about your story. I know that you're by the way, Sweet Laurel is one of seven children. Uh, so, uh, I'll leave it at that, <laughs> but I'll let you, I'll let you take the microphone and tell us a little bit about your background and a little bit about your experiences at Christmas, because this is our annual Christmas show. So Laurel, take it from there. So special. Well, Christmas really is one of my favorite times of year, and it's an honor to be here speaking about it. Uh, when I was a child, my Christmas memories are really formed around attending Christmas concerts, uh, wearing like red or green velvet dresses and having a house decorated to the nines for Christmas. My mom goes big on Christmas decor <laughs> and she still does. She, I think she has like over 20 Christmas boxes that she stores at her house. So it's a lot. And, um, you know, in as a young child, I just remember the, you know, the decor and the, you know, all the special colors and the music uh, associated with Christmas. And as I got older, I started to learn what it was really about. And, um, you know, it's such a special time of year, you could argue one of the most special times of year and uh, really centers around the birth of our savior and um, when he came to earth. And I think that that's really cool. And as I've had children, every single year they get older, I accumulate more Christmas stuff. And Christmas honestly becomes more special because seeing Christmas through a child's eyes is one of the most spectacular things. And um, 
my oldest is like, we call him the Christmas cheerleader because he has like a countdown calendar. He likes puts on the calendar the day we're decorating for Christmas. He wants to know when we're going caroling. <laughs> he wants to know all like he, he remembers all the traditions and he, you know, he's only six, but he, these traditions are really important to him as a six-year-old. And um, he remembers every single piece of decoration we have and where we had it in our house and make sure it goes in the right spot. So like it's, it's um, as I've had children, I've realized just how special it is for kids and how it can leave these like indelible stamps on their memory like I have. And so uh, it's, you know, more and more special every year as my kids get older, for sure. So we have to take pictures of, of all of the decorations. I actually think that we have more than 20 boxes, Laurel. I, I oh. know because we have serious Christmas decorations. And I do I do know your mother. And I've been in your home during Christmas time. And she goes big. She goes big on Christmas. Uh, but it's beautiful. And uh, my wife goes big on Christmas, too. We have serious decorations everywhere and uh but we we have to take pictures because we my sometimes my wife forgets where she puts things and she likes to have them in the same place every every year uh and and, and it's actually a lovely great great traditions you know um you know the i do think that this concept of, you know, the idea that, you know, what is Christmas all about? When you really kind of back it down and you kind of go back to the origins of Christmas, you know, Santa Claus wasn't there. Um, the reindeer weren't there. Uh, the snow, you know, Frosty the Snowman was not there in, in Bethlehem. Uh, Jesus was there. And I, mm-hmm. I think that when we when we go back to the foundational aspects of Christmas, this is a... This is a profound concept. Um, how do you how do you introduce this to your children? Yeah. Well, that's such a good question. Obviously, we um, we have like so many different types of Christmas books and Christmas stories. My kids are very well read in all the various uh, Christmas characters, if you will. Uh, but you know, as they get older, it has been really awesome to be able to, you know, share with our kids. Cause they'll ask us, you know, like, Hey, is Santa Claus real? Like they just ask us questions like this. And these are really hard questions to answer. Cause it's like, okay, so where do we draw the line? Cause they actually want to know. Sure. If Santa yeah. Claus is real. Um, but you know, we just try, my husband and I try to do our best to reiterate, you know, what Christmas is about. It's, it's a date in time and history that we celebrate because it's the date that we celebrate uh, Christ coming to earth as a baby. And, uh, you know, as our children get older, it's been really awesome to in- reinforce that. And um, we haven't started, you know, some of the Christmas traditions that I'd like to do as they get older. Like I want to get more into advent calendars and things like that as they get older and reading the scriptures associated with Christ coming into the world. But uh, it's been a really fun journey to just talk about the true meaning of Christmas, you know, teaching them the Christmas carols surrounding that. Um, Every year, my one of my most favorite traditions uh, is our neighborhood where we live. We go Christmas caroling every year in the neighborhood. And it's so special. And uh, my kids get all their little bells and instruments. And it's a really special time to sing carols in the neighborhood. And that's something I did as a child that when we moved to our new neighborhood, they were already doing. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this is perfect. Uh, So, you know, through the Christmas carols, you can learn so much about, uh, you know, the true meaning of Christmas, which is really special. And um, the big thing we're trying to maneuver right now is, you know, the children. I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old. They're more like six and a half at three and a half. And they are very focused on gifts, right? So it's like um they they associate Christmas with a lot of gifting. And it's like, yes, that's a big part of it. But as they get older, I'm hoping to be able to also share, you know, why we're gifting and 
uh, also how rewarding it is to be able to give gifts, um, you know, as well as receive them. Right. So, you know, that's a concept we'll tackle as they get older too, but right now they are very excited about their lists for Christmas. (laughs) Yes. Our oldest put an Apple watch on his Christmas list and we were like, we had to break it to him, you know, like, we're not doing an Apple watch for you for Christmas. That's not age appropriate, first of all. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, you know, there's other reasons. But, you know, um, you know, he's learning like he can't just ask for everything. Right. So. That's that's also a fun concept. I guess he can ask for it, but he, he, there's no guarantees that he's gonna. It's gonna happen. <laughs> you know? Uh, did you ever? Did you ever believe in Santa? So I, uh, I think you know it wasn't really a big focus at my house growing up, and I feel like from the beginning I just knew it wasn't like a realistic thing. Maybe because I learned about him a little older. Um, but you know, my, my mom was pretty into making sure like they, like we didn't think our presents were from Santa ever, you know? So from from as a small child, that was kind of my remembering of it. And, um, you know, I happen to be a history nerd and really enjoy that. The story of Santa Claus comes from an actual person, St. Nicholas. And just that story of, um, you know, what he did for people was really incredible too. And, um, it's interesting to see how different cultures have taken it and moved it forward. And, um, you know, I love, I love, you know, the joy that it brings to people, quite frankly. And, um, it, it, it is really an interesting thing to know, like he was an actual person and this is how it's, you know, morphed over the years. Absolutely. He was. And I, and I, I I don't think I ever believed in Santa. First of all, I never, I never, I never bought into the whole coming down the chimney because I, I, the chimney was kind of small and I, and I very quickly figured out that, you know, I'd look up the chimney and I kind of go, I don't think Santa can fit through there. And I remember being a little bit uh, perplexed by that. My parents weren't necessarily big Santa people either, but um, the, uh, (laughs) But the re- reality is that I think that Santa brings, you know, listen, I, 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 by the way, the other thing too, is I realized every, when you went into, when you were out shopping, there were Santas all over the place and you mm-hmm. kind of go, dang, if, if there's one Santa, what are all, are all these other Santas who are like in that store and this store and this it's store, I, I was, it was a, it was a confusing kind to kind of time when I was a young, young boy trying to figure out who the real Santa was. Um, mm-hmm. But I do love the story of St. Nick. I mean, St. Nicholas, uh, who was actually a very generous soul. And he, the concept of, you know, it is better to give than receive. He got that. He got that pretty straight up. And uh, he was a, he was a good guy. Uh, I don't remember all the details of his story, but I know that he would, he went around and he blessed people on Christmas. And of course, right. the, the original gifts that we, uh, the, the gift giving really truly comes actually from the, the wise men going back to the time of the, the birth of Christ, of course. Um, you, you, have, um, you have these memories. Um, why, is it, why is it important to pass these on to your kids uh, yeah. from when you think about... Um, you know, Christmas, uh, tell us why, what, you know, what, what your motivation is. is. Is it just because this is a warm, happy time of the year or what, tell us a little bit more what you're thinking about that is. I think a big part of it honestly is the warm, happy joy that comes from Christmas. There's a natural joy that I want to pass on and impart and celebrate. And then there's the other side of it, which is you know, using it as a moment where we can teach our children about, you know, the birth of Christ and what that means for us and what that means for the world. Um, A really big uh, part of, you know, our calendar revolves around this, right? You know, 2,023 years ago, you know, And, uh, and, and this is a historical moment that has really shaped our world and our culture. And so 
I think it's, it's definitely twofold. It's, you know, there is a innate joy and blessing that comes with Christmas and celebrating the holidays, but there's also like the, this very significant moment in time and history where the world changed. And that's something that I want to make sure we celebrate. And, uh, you know, I remember, uh, a couple years ago, uh, I wasn't always, you know, as into decorating our house, for example, before I had children, right. it was, it was, it was kind of like a, oh yeah, it's, it's the holidays, you know, we don't need to go all out, you know, but as I started having children, I got more into it. And, um, a friend of mine just really shared, you know, like, like I, the importance of making it a special time, not just for your children, but just for, you know, just so that they know that this is a significant moment in history that, you know, sharing and like uh, making sure like that our joy spreads to others on why it's a special time of year is also really significant. So um, right now, currently, um, our house is decorated inside and out. And, you know, my husband happens to be a a trained electrical engineer who (laughs) just knows a little too much about how much like power and capacity one house can hold in terms of Christmas lights. (laughs) And he maximizes that. So um, we have like thousands and thousands of Christmas lights on our house. And uh, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's so fun. And, um, you know, it's something that my husband really enjoys doing, but then also like the neighborhood, we, everyone is so grateful that we, 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 they call our house, the gingerbread house. We basically turn it into like, it just has so many lights that that's what it kind of comes off as. And, um, you know, it's really a thing we can share with our community too. And yeah. I think, I think that that like love and joy of Christmas is so important to share. So, so our house is decorated on the outside too, which is why we have all the boxes, by the way. And um, so we we uh, we also put Merry Christmas on the on the wall of my house, as you, as you probably know. When you drive by my house, you see this big Merry Christmas, which is which is I do that with my own two little hands. I go out there and and I tell people that's my my gift to the community is Merry Christmas on my wall. You know, one I've always been impressed by your penmanship. Like <laughs> how are you able to do it on large scale? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I'm, I'm better on large scale than small scale. I just tell you that okay. right now. But you know, <laughs> one of the things that I think is really profound about Christmas too is what you've already alluded to, which is the idea of giving. Mm-hmm. Um there is by definition, I think Christianity is a very generous faith. Uh, mm-hmm. We have, you know, the words of Christ are "is better to give than receive," and I and I believe that. And I think that you have to do it. You have to engage that. Certainly, mm-hmm. as parents, giving gifts to your children is such a joy. Is such a to actually watch their little eyes light mm-hmm. up and delight in a gift. Um, yeah. is so much fun. But I, I, I do think that this concept of, of giving and, and giving is something that you have to kind of, you have to learn how to do. It, it, it isn't a natural human uh, innate uh, characteristic. I think you have, to, you have to teach yourself how to be a giver. And I think that Christmas by definition does Say okay, we're gonna. I, you know, even people you buy presents for, you may not like them very much, but you still go out and buy them a present because that's part of the ethos, as part of what we do. And I think that, but in doing that, in that action, my experience has been that you become a you become a, a different person. You become a, a giver, and that to me is a profound, profound. A characteristic which hopefully will carry on, uh, carry over in not only in Christmas but into other parts of the year as well. Your, right. your, your your thoughts about giving, Laurel, sweet Laurel. It's it's one of those things where I think um, it's a very special concept. It's better to give than to receive, right? This is that is something that is, um, you know, spread widely and. I truly feel that once you experience that spirit of giving, uh, it 
it is something that can be contagious and like it it's it's a, also a spirit of generosity that um you begin to foster and you know that's one of those things that you have to only you can only learn by experiencing right and um i'm very excited to share that aspect of giving with my children as they get older and can understand that right because um it is that really important aspect of christmas and why we give gifts and so uh i've always really enjoyed giving personally i think um you know it's interesting because uh it's one of the love languages that's talked about gift giving. And I definitely think it's actually one of the ways that I share that I love people is I give them specifically baked goods. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're usually, oh, it's always like something sweet or baked or whatever. And um, even before I started my company, that was like really what I loved to do for people is give them um, cookies. You know, I always brought them to people. <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, even if it wasn't a celebration, right. And, um, you know, that's always been a way that I've shared, you know, that I love people. Yeah. So, um, I think it's really awesome that it's kind of come full circle for me in terms of a career and what I'm fully engaged in every day is, um, you know, our mission as a company is to give people the most nourishing and delicious baked goods possible and um, that's really what we're trying to do. So it's a special thing that I get to take part of on a daily basis. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I think that you, that the beginning, you know, your passion has has been, you know, baking and and, and making a, these uh, these 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 cookies and whatever you make. But I, I do think that 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 began uh, with this the whole idea, and I remember actually Laurel, you bringing cookies to I think to our home for for different events oh, yeah. we've had at the house. So uh, I can attest that this is exactly part of it. I do think that also going back to for Christmas for a moment, even young children really get a thrill out of giving. They give a something they made. Uh, I have a, a granddaughter who's into pottery. She's a little bit older and she does pottery. And I, I kind of know what she's going to give me for Christmas. I hope I don't ruin this for her. But, um, but I, because I've seen a couple of her little things and she's very, very excited about giving these particular gifts to the entire family. And I think there's such a power, is such a moment where we can actually tell, you know, teach children, this is a good thing. And I and and that spirit of generosity that we want to foster in all of our children, uh, this sure. is a, a perfect uh, opportunity to do that. Um, let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna change. I want. I want to kind of allow you to kind of a little bit share a little bit about your your company because I I do think that uh, we you you mentioned it earlier on in the show here about Sweet Laurel. Sweet Laurel, can you tell a little bit about your story because I think this is really a very profound story. And how your company actually kind of got going, and maybe share a little bit of uh, as we finish up here, a little bit about some of the things that you actually have uh, going for Christmas this Christmas season through Sweet Laurel. So, but can you share a little bit about your story? I think it's a really fascinating story. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. So, um, basically, about ten years ago now, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, and it's called Hashimoto's disease. And when I was diagnosed at first, uh, you know, it was kind of business as usual. I didn't notice any changes in my body, but as the months went on, I did start to notice, like I was experiencing extreme lapses in energy. Um, you know, my body systems just weren't functioning normally. I wasn't digesting food properly. I had, um, been losing a lot of weight and like, just experiencing all these things that weren't normal for someone in their 20s. And it was a very jarring experience. And I it got so bad that I had to take off a year of teaching. I was a school teacher at the time. And that was very hard for me because, you know, I had fully been trained to do teaching and I was so passionate about it, but um, I was really sick. So I started to work with a doctor uh, who's a functional medical doctor. She uh, basically told me, 
that with my autoimmune disease, if I wanted to experience some healing, I needed to cut out inflammatory foods. And so at the time I was eating basically a normal diet, you know, uh, normal food, right? And she had me cut out all grains, refined sugar, dairy, and legumes, because at the time I was not able to digest these foods properly and they were causing a lot of inflammation. And uh, particularly with thyroid issues, which Hashimoto's disease is a thyroid disease, um, it's really good to try to lower your body's inflammation. So um, I, I tried this diet cold turkey for a year. And literally after a year, my inflammation had subsided and my body was starting to function normally. And it was, it was really a miracle. And, um, so this, this method of eating was really working for me. And, um, within that year, I started to really, uh, realize because this was, this was like 2014, you couldn't go to the grocery store and find anything that was grain-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. Like you pretty much were just buying produce and, you know, animal protein at that point. Like there weren't any like snacks or baked goods or anything you could buy at the store. And, um, so I started making all my own food and of course, baked goods were included in that brownies, cake, you name it. And, uh, came up with a style of eating that worked for me without the grains, refined sugar and dairy. So I started creating these recipes that were actually really tasty and giving them to friends and loved ones. I got all this positive feedback and I started to share them. And, um, it was when I gave them to one of my dear friends, uh, who's now my business partner, Claire Thomas, that she was like, Laurel, this is not your average gluten-free baked good. You need to do something with this. And so that was 2015. And we decided to go into business together and share these grain-free, refined sugar-free and dairy-free treats with people. We started basically locally in LA, teaching workshops and classes and selling on our website. And then uh, we started to do some nationwide shipping a few years later and wrote our first cookbook followed by a second cookbook and opened our cake shop in LA and uh, started, you know, shipping products nationwide, which was a really big deal. Um, we're still the only grain-free, dairy-free, sugar-free bakery shipping cakes and pies nationwide. Wow. And uh, so there's quite a demand for it, actually. There's so many people who have to eat the same way that I had to eat in order to heal. Um, lots of people with autoimmune diseases come to Sweet Laurel. We have a huge diabetic community that's part of Sweet Laurel and um, you know people with celiac disease. And I would say about half of our customer base are these individuals that are seeking healing and they just need to cut out you know, one of those food groups, sure. gluten, you yeah. or, or sugar. And um, the other half is just people that like love good food. Sweet Laurel actually tastes good, even though it's free of grains, refined sugar and dairy. And, you know, they want the best thing that they can buy in terms of a baked good that's not going to give them a sugar crash or, um, you know, be super unhealthy for them. So uh, that's a big you know, we've got this great community of supporters and it's been great because this year we launched our products in grocery stores and we were so um, grateful and impressed by our community because they really went out and supported us. We've had incredible sell-through numbers in our grocery store launch and, um, you know, even our buyers are shocked at these grocery stores that are, you know, nationwide. They're like, wow. Yeah, wow. I can really <laughs> sell baked goods or um, baking mixes. And that's what we have nationwide at Sprouts. And it's been a really great thing to go into that part of our business, this grocery launch with having this awesome community because they're supporting us so much. And we're also bringing more people to the fold, so to speak, that are learning about the brand for the first time. So it's a really fun and exciting time at Sweet Laurel. And our goal truly is to give the most nourishing and delicious food to as many people as possible. So being in the grocery stores is like a way we can do that further. So I, I, I would say <clears throat> it's a it's a huge, huge jump. And and uh, good for you. I'm so proud of you. Uh 
Laurel, for for what you've done. I mean, I know Claire Thomas has actually been a big part of it, and and your husband, a lot of other people, have been a part of your uh, of your journey here, and it's really uh, it's remarkable because you have really taken your passion and 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 something very personal that happened in your life, and you've you've really turned it around. And uh, you talk about giving. You're giving you're giving something very very important to the the community out there. So uh, good job. Um, what do you have for Christmas? What is Sweet Laurel putting out for Christmas? Thank you so much for asking. So right now, our biggest thing that we're selling is our vegan gingerbread cookie dough. So it's a completely grain-free, refined sugar-free, dairy-free cookie dough. It's on our website, so it ships nationwide. But if you live in Southern California or the surrounding states, we are actually at Whole Foods right now. So you can uh, pick up our cookie dough seasonally at Whole Foods. Um, after the holiday season, our chocolate chip cookie dough will be there. But uh, right now, our gingerbread cookie dough is our big product. Um, and then we also have other things that we're shipping nationwide and delivering locally here in LA, like our uh, apple our apple crumb pie is my personal favorite. <laughs> I love it so much. I'm a huge apple pie person. And then we have the most delicious cinnamon rolls these are like a really popular brunch or Christmas morning tradition for a lot of people. Those ship nationwide are, are available here in LA. And then um, we have a really decadent, sparkly New Year's Eve cake that we do as well for New Year's Eve celebrations. So uh, those are some of the products that we're the most excited about. We tend to go really big on the holidays. It's, it's um you know, Sweet Laurel, part of the brand is really... It, we really have that a nostalgic bakery feel and like we really want to make sure we're offering um, baked goods that everyone wants in their household. So we have quite a few different offerings that are really special. So this is a, this is a great thing. So look it up. How do you find your sweetlaurel.com, right? Is that it? Yeah. And Our you- website is sweetlaurel.com. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at Sweet Laurel Bakery. And if you're in LA, we have a cake shop loaded, located in Pacific Palisades. And you can find us in grocery stores too. Like I said, we're in um, Sprouts Nationwide. Um, here in Southern California, we're in Whole Foods, uh, Bristol Farms, Gelson's, uh, a number of grocery stores like Air One and Lazy Acres too. So you can find us there. But uh, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Well, friends, look her up. And this, by the way, this is healthy food, by the way. <laughs> so when you have it and it's excellent, we I, I love it. So <clears throat> Sweet Laurel, thank you for helping to bring in the holiday Christmas season. I uh, appreciate your, your, your thoughts. And uh, I wish you a very, very Merry Christmas to you and your family, uh, your extended family. And uh, God bless you for what you're doing. Uh, friends, you, so friends, you have been listening today to the Hamilton review. We've had a great conversation with Laurel Gallucci, otherwise known as sweet Laurel. So sweet Laurel, thanks for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor to chat with you and I wish you a happy, happy holiday season to you and your loved ones. Thank you so much. And friends, check her out, sweetlaurel.com. You'll find her. She's getting big. She's out there. So uh, God bless you, sweet Laurel. So keep up the good work and friends, thank you, so much. you are welcome. So friends, thank you for joining us today. Have a great Christmas and we'll see you uh, next time. Take care. You have been listening to the Hamilton review where kids and culture collide. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your day. Tune in again next week on Apple podcast, rate and comment and tell a friend.